This week on a and the Seventh-day Adventist World Church launches the new digital evangelism app, Adventist Teams. Adventist chaplains minister to hundreds impacted by the recent earthquake in Haiti. And later, a local church organizes a free market for people in Cameroon. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, on November 1st, the Seventh-day Adventist World Church launched a new app called Adventist Teams in an effort to grow the church's presence in the digital world. The app will allow members around the world to source and distribute quality biblical content for friends and family in the digital space. Adventist Teams is a result of the worldwide Adventist Church's focus on total member involvement. After a successful evangelism campaign run by Adventist World Radio in 2020, it became evident that church members needed a set of tools to equip and enable them to work together in digital mission activities. Since that time, the Adventist Church has been developing Adventist Teams, an app that hopes to impact the algorithms of social platforms by having thousands of Adventists consume and share the best Adventist content. Anyone can use the app. Once you have been invited and have signed up, you can begin browsing different resources from the local church level to the Adventist Church headquarters and associated organizations for content that is relevant and helpful to your intended audience. Apart from finding existing resources to share, the app will allow users to share their own created content as well. Coordinator of Adventist Teams, Alyssa Truman says, it is of the utmost importance to help raise up more leaders in the church, people who inspire and motivate others to share their faith. She shares that this app has multiple purposes, to create, to source, to share, to inspire and empower. For more information and to get involved, you can download the Adventist Teams app for Apple and Android phones. You can also visit adventistteams.org for more information. to be your vessel 
give me the means to save someone today. today, no? Kind of. I tend to be a little tense in these missions. Really? Do you know that you can use social media to be a missionary? Do you know Adventist teams? Adventist teams? What is that? Well, wait a second. I'm gonna send you an invite to be in my team. Okay. What should I do now? Well, you download the app, register, and you're ready to start using it. It's really, really simple. Adventist Teams is a digital missionary community where you can find the best content to share with your friends. Oh, nice! Look, my friend needs some hope. Where can I find something about that in the app? Right here, on tags. Coming up, a local church in Cameroon organizes a free market for people in need. But up next, Adventist chaplains minister to 400 people emotionally affected by the recent earthquake in Haiti. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Hi, Bio. How are you? Are you okay? Dear Bio, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt, though. Which reminds me, are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose with <laughs> Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Welcome back. A group of Adventist chaplains from the Inter-American Division's French territory ministered to victims of the recent earthquake that devastated the southern peninsula of Haiti. The chaplains offered emotional and psychosocial support to more than 400 people from September 9 through 17. 
Director of Pastor Care and Education in St. John's Episcopal Hospital and Adventist Chaplaincy Instructor Asnel Valsine invited a handful of Adventist chaplains from the French Antilles, Guiana region and Haiti. Since April, the chaplains have been receiving training on clinical and pastoral education, and it was fitting to provide much needed assistance. Eight chaplains from Guadalupe, Martinique, and French Guiana flew to Haiti to pair up with eight chaplains from the Haitian Union. Dr. Valsine said they experienced more than they expected. In addition to providing emotional support, Dr. Valsine and local church leadership distributed 110 tents and 110 air mattresses to those still living in the open air. The intervention took a lot of coordination and money, but was a great opportunity to impact hundreds of people in dire need of attention. Dr. Valsin says, when God calls you, God makes preparation for the mission. Regardless of where we are in the world, we have our humanity as the one thing in common. President of the Adventist Church in Haiti, Pierre Caparo, says that the intervention in Les Cais was only scratching the surface, but it will bring about more awareness of people's needs in the aftermath of any disaster. The Adventist Community Services, or ACS, of the Nkoldongo Adventist Church in Cameroon distributed donations estimated at around 3 million CFA francs to needy families and children through a free market held in September. About 500 people took part in this exercise. Each participant could purchase at least five items for free, presenting tickets offered by the organizers. They all benefited from school kits, clothing, shoes, bags, suitcases, mats, seals, foodstuffs, and even soap. This initiative of the ACS Department of the Nkordongo Adventist Community was launched in July 2021 by fundraising from church members, organizations, and individuals. During a period of two months, committee leaders and several members visited various districts with the support of district leaders to identify vulnerable children and families who could benefit from this opportunity and support during the beginning of the school year in Cameroon. 92 students received school kits made up of books, notebooks, pens, backpacks, etc. The other kits were kept in ACS storage to be given to families and children who were absent on the day of distribution. In addition, 35 heads of families, including 28 women and seven men, enrolled in a six-hour training program to help generate income for their families. During the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the market inauguration, Nkordongo community pastor Nko Manduga Ferdinand thanked the Adventist Development and Relief Agency and the Adventist Church in Cameroon for the donations of clothes, shoes, bags, and baby scooters. Dean of the School of Theology at Brazil Adventist University, Reinaldo W. Sequeira, has been named the Seventh-day Adventist Church's new chief liaison to the Jewish community. The General Conference Administrative Committee voted Sequeira as the director of the World Jewish Adventist Friendship Center, which operates under the auspices of Adventist Mission and oversees the World Church's relations with the Jewish people. Sequeira says, I accept this call from the church with humility counting it as an honor and a privilege bestowed upon me and my family by the Lord through his church. I pray that the Lord might guide us in service for the glory of his name and for the advancement of the mission of our church. Sequera has overseen the South American division's relations with the Jewish community since 2003. Sequera has established Jewish Adventist congregations in the Brazilian cities of Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Curitiba, Campinas, Manaus, and Florianopolis. The World Jewish Adventist Friendship Center is one of six global mission centers under the support of Adventist Mission that serve as liaisons between the Adventist Church and, spe and specific people groups. You can find out more at AdventistMission.org. An earthquake caused significant damage to the Becca Becca Adventist Community High School on Friday afternoon, October 15, in the Solomon Islands Western Province. Becca Becca is a Seventh-day Adventist boarding high school with 249 students, 18 teaching staff, and nine support staff. The epicenter of the earthquake was between 25 and 30 kilometers, or roughly 18 miles from the closest point of land communities, which happened to be the boarding school. 23 out of 28 homes on the campus were damaged in some way. Two buildings, the principal's house and a small store, completely collapsed and seven buildings were seriously damaged. Five staff families are staying in the dining hall, one group is in a classroom, and the principal is staying in the transit flat. 
Adra Solomon Islands loaned the school five tarpaulins and assorted ropes to assist with shelter if needed. A team from nearby Batuna Vocational College went to assess the damage and help with some building, plumbing, and electrical repairs. Becca Becca Principal N.C. Dione says the administration would like to thank you all for your prayers and especially thank Adra Solomons for being the first to positively respond by sending an officer to assess the situation. We also thank God that no lives were lost and that both students and staff families are well. The classrooms are also intact and for that we are truly thankful. Coming up, David Trim is here for this week in Adventist history. But up next, those battling depression have a light at the end of the tunnel thanks to a program run by Adventist Health and Adra. We really, really need our sleep. Are you from? No, we're not from the future, but we know you only pay attention to yourselves, so here we are. But how? We have no time for that. We have less than 30 seconds. Fact number one, adults need seven hours of sound, restful sleep to keep their immune systems healthy and to fight viruses. And today, right now, is the single most important thing you can do to keep yourself healthy. What are you doing? We're just Googling if spicy foods cause hallucinations. A fact too, staring at your phone or your computer right before bed prevents sound sleep. And you'll be tired the next day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Can we just go to bed, please? they're evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I believe Bible. Welcome back. Rebecca struggled with depression for years, even trying to self-medicate with alcohol. Rebecca and others struggling with depression are able to find light at the end of the tunnel through a program run by Adventist Health in connection with ADRA in New Zealand. Adventist Mission has more. Depression for me is um, a deep, dark hole. It is fighting demons inside your head. It's, it's fighting a battle on a daily basis with thoughts that you feel that you have no control over. I had the depression because no one could diagnose. I, I ended up having stage four endometriosis, which is a woman's condition. And I had that for seven years. I had five lots of surgery and no one could find out what was wrong with me. I did try and self-medicate with alcohol, which didn't help, it made things worse. Um, I was crying all the time. My daughter used to come and pick out tissues from the box and give them to me and say, here yeah, mum, it's gonna be all right. I constantly was moping around and grumpy and angry and could get frustrated at the children. And I didn't want to be that mother. I wanted to be a supportive, supportive, loving mother. And even though I love my children to bits, I felt that I was neglecting them with true love. It wasn't easy at all to try and seek help, but I knew I had to do it for my children. 
I wanted to be the best mother I possibly could and that's when I saw the ad in the paper. On the first day of this program we were introduced um, by two lovely ladies, Katie and Kerry, and who ran the program and they were full of life, absolutely full of life. They were laughing, smiling, made us even laugh and smile, and they made us feel so, so welcome. During this program, we show them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that they can turn their sadness into happiness. And we, they can see that there's a better life waiting for them. It was uplifting. It made me want to go every week. Uh, it was something to look forward to. And I actually felt that there is hope there. There is, there is really a light at the end of the tunnel. I've, I felt if I could follow this and stick to this, I felt enlightened. I understand that people out there are hurting and I understand that they need help. And to me, it's important that they come to the right place to get it and they can be well. I know they can be well. I've seen that happen over and over again. I did used to believe in God, but I had some childhood experiences that turned me away from um, the God as such. For me, it was quite hard to pray in the beginning because I hadn't done this for years. And, um, but I joined in and I thought, I really need to think this through and, and, and take this on board, and I did. And by doing this and praying with, with Katie and Kerry, it actually worked. I, I, I felt better in myself. I felt that there is a presence out there, and it made me realise that there is a God in this world. Let's make no mistake about this. Jesus is really the healer. He's the one that offers help and healing. And we like to follow in his footsteps. He actually practically helped people and he showed them what it was that he could do to help them and then they followed him. I feel that, you know, this course has helped me so much, not only for the uh, mental side of things, but also to, to have God in my life and to realise that he has always been here and that I, I know that he'll always be in my life and he'll be beside me and it's a journey that I'm going to continue for the rest of my life. Adventist Health are very passionate about helping people too and they saw a need in our communities. They've seen this opportunity to be able to use this program and they have backed it. It's delightful that ADRA have got on board with this program. They also see the value in it and they have believed that it can tremendously help people too. And their involvement is critical to bringing the program within the financial reach of New Zealanders, the average New Zealander. ADRA believes this program can make a difference. The Depression and Anxiety Program was created to help and educate communities about making positive, healthy change. ADRA saw how important this is for New Zealanders. Partnering with the Adventist Health Ministry and the Church, we now provide this program to the community for a fraction of the cost, making it affordable for everyone. Because of their involvement, we've been able to give this to the communities at a much more reasonable rate. I feel that the people that have created this depression and anxiety program are, are amazing. and. I just only wish that all the people who are suffering from anxiety and depression could take this course. It, it changed my life and I know it can change these. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, we learn about the life and ministry of William C. Granger, the first Adventist missionary to Japan. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. 
On October 31, 1899, William C. Granger, first Seventh-day Adventist missionary to Japan, died in that country after having only been there for two years and 11 months. Granger had served as a minister, teacher, and college president in the United States. A convert of Abram LaRue in California in the 1870s, soon after conversion, William Granger conducted evangelistic meetings in that state. He later taught in and served as president of Healdsburg College, the church's second college, today's Pacific Union College. In 1897, William and his wife Elizabeth, then aged 53 and 52 respectively, courageously accepted a call to go as missionaries to Japan. They were accompanied by a former student of William's who was of Japanese descent, T.H. Okahira. They founded a school in Tokyo to teach the Bible. You see William and Elizabeth here in this photograph taken of them in Tokyo with an unknown local person. The school enjoyed some success, though reports were unclear as to whether students wanted to study the Bible or to learn English. But Granger's educational approach enjoyed sufficient success that, in 1898, four other missionaries were called to join them. In early October 1899, Granger contracted an unknown illness. After suffering for more than three weeks, he passed away on October 31, aged 55. He is buried in Aoyama Cemetery in Tokyo. He was said simply to have died of fever, but exactly what tropical disease he suffered from is unknown. A church leader who had known the Grangers in California lamented the loss of a true and faithful husband, a loving and wise father, and a genial, equable, helpful brother. A colleague who witnessed his passing wrote to friends at home, he died the most triumphant death I ever heard of. This may be a way of rationalizing his suffering and the absence of miraculous healing, but it is also a way of saying that Granger was of good courage in his last moments and wanted his colleagues to focus not on grief, but on their work. And that's a good final thought for this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching, ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. The passage says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>